Hello, welcome to the Healthy Alternatives podcast. I am Dr. Christine Sauer with DocChristine.com. Today's show is a recording of my radio show of the same name. Enjoy! Good afternoon, this is Dr. Christine Sauer, your host of the show Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIOE FM with live stream on communityradio.ca every Thursday at 12 noon Atlantic Standard Time. Thanks for tuning in today. In this show, I will talk mostly with guests about all aspects of health, healthcare and wellness, from conventional to alternative and everything in between. My mission for this radio show is to help change people's lives for the better by informing them about different options to get and stay healthy and well so they can choose for themselves which option might work in their case. And if you feel you're stuck in a dark place, I want to tell you, don't give up. There's a light at the end of the tunnel for you too. Today, I am extremely pleased to be with Julie Danilok. Hi, Julie. Welcome to my show. Oh, I'm so honored to be on your show. Thank you so much for inviting me. I am so happy you agreed to come on because Julie is not only a registered holistic nutritionist, an eating psychology coach, a chef and a herbalist, but also a best-selling author, TV show host and a regular contributor for the Marilyn Dennis Show. And you also appeared on Dr. Oz, CTV News, Global, OWN and many radio shows as well as written articles for Shetland, Raiders Digest and you're traveling and speaking speaking publicly. Wow, Julie, we could spend the whole show just talking about your bio. <laughs> I can't believe I ended up doing all that. And I know as a doctor, you can really understand how you just build your experience over time. And we're just so thrilled to share it. So thank you so much for building this space that we get to come and, and speak to how we can help people because that's really our mission on this planet. Right, right, right. Very much so. So how did you discover that that was your passion for nutrition and what made you to be the person you are today? Well, the big uh, start happened when I was seven years old and I had terrible food allergies that were causing attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and terrible learning disabilities. And thank goodness my mom figured it out through the work of Dr. Feingold that mm -hmm. when she took me off color and sugar and other artificial preservatives like BHA, BHT, um, I was an MSG. I was able to truly turn my brain inflammation off and was able to go from D's in school all the way to straight A's. And that was a huge turning point in my life because I used to cry a lot and I was so disruptive to my family and I could never sleep a wink. And all of a sudden in two weeks of being on a natural menu, I was able to go to sleeping through the night and having a lot of joy and amazing uh, shift in my ability to learn, which was probably why I ended up so passionately studying is because I, I finally felt like myself, which was, was great. Yeah, we really change lives with changing uh, our nutrition. And that is a wonderful mm. story. And it's so important that we get this story, especially here to Nova Scotia. There are so many children affected by ADHD, ADD, or whatever the label may be. And really nobody gets to the root cause and, and changes things in, instead of giving them just Ritalin or something like it. My issue with taking these extreme uh, stimulants, I, I mean, I don't even think parents realize when they stick their children on these drugs for ADHD that, you know, it's so, it's so counterintuitive that you would give a stimulant to a child to calm them down. But mm -hmm. what it does is it over revs their nervous system and they, they hyper focus and then can crash. That's and that's right. what's so sad about these mm -hmm. medications is that um, the children really report not being themselves and feeling um, really um, kind of in a daze where the beautiful thing about embracing an all natural menu and treating the brain inflammation and getting to the root cause is that you still have all that sparkle. Because one of the thing I can say as an ADHD person is that I have the ability to juggle things more than most people. And I have the ability to create, I have like a lot of ideas. So if you want to give your child that opportunity just to see if it'll work, you, you really just want to take them off the artificial foods 
and especially dyes, cold tar dye derivatives, red yes. dye, blue dye, yellow dye, like tartrazine, but really often causes it's also brain uh, inflammation. Gluten-free, casein-free, and, and all that, mm -hmm. and, and it really makes a yeah. turnaround. But it, it's, it's, it's for many parents, I think it's an impossible to do. So that would be a whole new show to do that because it's really an important topic and I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. it because I, I don't know if sure. you know it, I'm a brain health coach myself Wonderful. And, and dealt Wonderful. with mental illness and I really try to get it as at least locally so far and, and, and more, more internationally like you do out in the open that we need to change what we eat. Yes, it's so important. And the interesting thing is that, you know, I had this incredible healing when I was seven. Yeah. But then in my teen years, I ended up really struggling with rebellion. So mm -hmm. I really understand the emotional piece. Like when I hit, say, 13, 14, 15, I, I really was like, ah, mom, you know, fine. That was fine when I was a kid. But like, I just want to feel normal. So I would eat like a whole plate of French fries with with flour and the gravy and then I'd have a brownie and cheesies and chocolate milk and <laughs> yeah. all these foods mm -hmm. as a teenager and then I, I found my weight ballooned and my skin blew up and I ended up having really some more health issues um, as I got older and that's when I had to tackle the emotional eating piece so I just want to give people hope that if they feel addicted to junk food It's a very it's a very transient thing. It's a totally healable thing. If you feel like you're addicted to sugar, that's where I really feel that getting in touch with a health coach, like like the wonderful like work us. you're doing mm, and is yourself so, is so important. Yes. Yeah, and, absolutely and, critical. And, and, and I absolutely love what you do and you're spreading the word and that's wonderful and I wish more people would take action and we definitely, especially in Canada, need more health coaches that help people to do that. And yeah, now, it's so now, important. Yeah, it's very important. And uh, now what's your non-negotiable when it comes to your diet? What do you never, ever eat? Well, one thing I really realized um, when I went to Thailand and nearly died of food poisoning, I mm. came home with post-infectious colitis. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I can't break down gluten at all. And therefore, now that I'm, you know, 10 years down the track of, of eating completely naturally, I really now do not have any gluten at all, unless I'm accidentally poisoned in a restaurant, which happens occasionally. Um, but I will, I will, what I really suggest if somebody knows that they're having food allergies is spring for that bracelet that takes um, the seriousness of, a, of your allergies to the next level. Mm. Um, so I have a bracelet that says, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm allergic to gluten and casein. And I'm also allergic to, uh, I'm actually totally intolerant to cane sugar. Yeah. And by putting it on a metal bracelet really makes the kitchen take it more seriously. And I also have a card that I can send back to the chef. <laughs> and that makes a massive difference because they can't say, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't hear you. Um, they see the card and they know it's serious and they take it really seriously. So uh, one thing I think that will happen in the next decade is people will realize that they don't break down sucrose very well, which uh -huh. is standard table sugar. And by um, having uh, sweeteners that are easier on their system, like stevia or monk fruit, or even if you want a high carb sweetener that's really healthy, then raw honey, something like that, that is much easier to digest digest and much much kinder to your gut lining um, will really not only help your gut but also help your brain right. and I think people suffering from anxiety and suffering from a lot of negative self-talk and a lot of PMS will really notice their symptoms turn around once they get off the sugar. That is so true and, and uh, I always emphasize that we need to keep our brain healthy because the wall for our health gets lost or won between our ears. That's what Dr. Amen said. Do you know him for sure? Yeah. And, and I love it absolutely when he says that. It's so true. Yeah, totally. And absolutely. If we are so addicted to junk that we can't think of anything else, then mm -hmm. we need our brain to fix our brain so it makes better decisions. That's such a true thing, right? Because mm. so many people feel like they're stuck in a loop. Yes. And the great news is, is that there's nutrition that truly helps us let go of our food addiction. Yeah. And also give us more empowerment to get over bigger addiction, which is, which is really tremendous when we see people who um, even have... Uh, 
on substance abuse issues mm. are, are, are more able to cope with their stress when they have the right nutrients going into them. That's so important. And I always feel that uh, when when you learn how to get off one substance and, and sugar and, and food in that way, junk food is a true addiction. It's more addictive than cocaine. And it's so important to know that. Yes, it's unfortunate that a lot of people think that sugar is an empty calorie. Mm. I feel that sugar is a robbing calorie. It actually robs all your energy from your bank. Love that, So yeah. you need to withdraw on not only... Um, when, you, when you make a deposit of sugar, you need to withdraw B vitamins and withdraw minerals to spin that empty calorie into your Krebs cycle to make ATP. So That's it costs right. you dearly to use that sugar. So I'd love people to have that new paradigm shift because it's shocking when children on Halloween and Christmas and Easter and all these different occasions are rewarded with tremendous amounts of white refined sugar mm -hmm. and dye. And the classic birthday cake is, is really poison yeah. in, a, in a nice form. Yeah, yeah, it tastes good for a few seconds and then it wreaks days of havoc for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so what do you think of erythrol? erythrol? I like myself, I like erythrol if, if you have no problem, if, uh, small amounts because it will cause diarrhea if you eat too much. But it's one of the sugar alcohols that doesn't raise your blood sugar. I'm a, I'm. I basically think that with sugar alcohols, like erythritol is the best out of all of them, mm. followed by maybe the second one would be xylitol. Mm. And then underneath those would be the ones that really cause diarrhea. So I don't recommend things like sorbitol or mm. maltitol. Those are very hard on the bowel. But the erythritol and a little bit of xylitol can be very helpful. Um, I consider it like the methadone to the heroin or sugar. I like in the that. Way that it, it helps Analogy. you break up with sugar. Lovely. It helps you make that first transition off of sugar. Now, ideally, I want you to get off sugar alcohols eventually, purely because they are an alcohol that's a little bit challenging for your liver. So it would be ideal if you were to have, for example, monk fruit or stevia that has no calories and doesn't have any negative side effects. I've done papers on both um, monk fruit and stevia. I have um, one paper that I helped edit that that um, looked into over 200 different studies on stevia, and I feel very com comfortable that it is. Um, it's it's a plant from Peru yeah. that is in, in the mint family, and it's it's very harmless in comparison to the damaging effects of too much carbohydrate. And I couldn't so agree I more. We can favorite. even grow it here in Canada, no problem. Yeah, and it tastes wonderful mixed into shakes and smoothies. Oh, it, it sure does. It's a little hard when you want to do some baking, but uh, yeah, great. But it's it, a little hard with baking. That's why it mixes down really well. Like um, I used it this morning, where it's mixed down with some erythritol, and that's when it yeah. works well. Is when you cut the stevia a little bit with erythritol. Um, that's really popular in in chocolate right now. Sugar-free chocolate is to have stevia and erythritol mixed together. Yeah, I know, and I, I I buy that actually here locally too because that is one that's my go-to sweetener if I really want some. Because I, I I used to use Splenda a lot, and then I write all the studies about it, and now I'm getting out of that too because it's really not good. Now, yeah, the um the, the issues with Splenda is of course it's a chlorine molecule attached to sugar, right. so it can be hard on your bowel flora. Where I love that stevia, so far we haven't found any negative side effects. Now, to close the first half, I'm very excited to talk to you more on the second half, of course. But uh, I, I really would love to, to hear more about what you think about nutrition. And uh, this ends the first half of today's broadcast here. And please tune in after the commercial break for more about nutrition with Julie Daniluk. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back to Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIO EFM or on the web at communityradio.ca. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer, and today I'm talking with Julie Daniluk. Hi, Julie. Welcome back. Thank you so much. This has uh, been so fun to talk to someone as knowledgeable as yourself. Thanks. The same here. And I, I love featuring guests that are uh, so, um, let's say, have, have a such a wonderful voice that's entertaining and smart at the same time. <laughs> oh, thank and you. I'm sure your presentations like mine are not that boring and don't have 15, 20 bullet points where everybody falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I do try to make them fun. Yeah. No, I heard about yeah. that, yeah. Now, in the first half, we talked a little bit about your story with uh, how you overcame ADHD with the help of your mother that took you off all the artificial stuff and changed your nutrition. So that is a wonderful story by itself. Now, what is the biggest nutrition misconceptions that you always have to clear up for people? I think the biggest one that people are still struggling with is understanding that not all fat is bad for you. A lot of people think going low fat is a way to lose weight. Mm. And I really see that as, as a terrible um, misconception. Um, know that there's good fats out there that are critical for our hormones, critical for our mental health, especially omega-3 sources. And I think a lot of people overeat omega-6 in our world because of high, high grain consumption, like soy oil, corn oil, canola oil, mm. um, is really trumping our, our real natural diet, where in the past we used to have a very high amount of good omega-3s from leafy greens and things like walnuts and hemp hearts and all those wonderful fish and even, sources and seafood. Even grass-fed beef and pastured pork and the fat from them. Yes, because, of course, they eat the grass and that contains omega-3 and that goes into their tissues. Exactly. And that's, so it's, that's it's highly that bioavailable. Like and that. and, and yeah. many people don't know that the, ration, the relationship of omega-3 to 6 is, is 1 to 1 in grass-fed beef and 20 to 1 omega-6 to 3 in kafo beef. Mm -hmm. That's yes. crazy. It's just dreadful. Yeah. And that's why in my um, people, I always see their, their slack jawed in, in my talks because I say, you know, back before farming, we had one to one ratio of omega-3 mm -hmm. to omega-6. And now in today's world, we have 20 times the amount of omega-6 than we do omega-3. And that's why we're inflamed. That's right. why our brain isn't working. That's why we have terrible mood disorders. So if someone's dealing with depression, I really encourage them to get on a very high omega-3 menu. I'm in love with, you know, a product made right in Halifax, which is Nutri-Sea yes. and Nutri-Veggie. Those wonderful products are extremely high in omega-3. Mm -hmm. And not just any omega-3, but a pre-converted omega-3 called eicosapentaenoic acid, or EPA for mm -hmm. short. And That's that that really shuts off the inflammation in the brain. Right. That's why I really call EPA... The, the acronym really should stand for eats your pain away because it has the ability to squash pain like a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Sure. So if someone's on an NSAID, they should really try using omega-3s. And um, in the latest study I saw on rheumatoid arthritis, people can reduce their medication by one-third just by putting in that wonderful one to two teaspoons of high EPA fish oil per day. It's right. really cool. Right, and, and it's quite interesting how DHA fish oil works differently than high EPA fish oil. So it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating topic of research. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that... It really is. Yeah, and, and, and it's so important. And I hate seeing people on high doses of uh, uh, statins and their cholesterol and, and all the fats in their body go so low that they don't feel good anymore and they get depressed mm -hmm. and demented and that's so sad. Yeah, they don't realize that omega-3 actually plays a role in their adrenal health, in their thyroid health, in their in their sex hormone health, that you have to have these rich amounts of omega-3 mm. and also, as you said, you have to have some good quality saturated fat from pasture-raised and organic animals or if you're vegetarian, you need to really look to coconut oil yeah. because you want to have a long chain saturate to help you make your sex hormones so right. if people are low um low 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 fat you can see how it would mess with your hormones mess with your skin mess with your immune system wow people become a hot mess when they have um deep fried 
trans fat ridden food and mm-hmm. not really paying attention to the need for essential fatty acids. I find it bizarre. I don't know what happened, but they are essential fats, meaning you can't make them inside your body. You have to acquire them. Therefore, they qualify as a vitamin and at one point it was called vitamin F. Mm-hmm. And it would have been so handy if it was vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F, and people would have just realized they needed their good fats. And that's why I'm, I'm a huge campaigner to change people's minds about the, the healthy fats they need to heal. Yeah, I love that, uh, and I, I go on this. I do it in the same horn because we need cholesterol, for example, to make hormones and everything else. Every cell is is high in cholesterol. We need it. Yeah, Now, absolutely. I have a question. You travel a lot. What yeah. do you eat when you are on the go? What's your favorite snack? What do you eat when you go yeah. to a restaurant? The number one thing I do when I travel is to make my own meal replacement shake, which someday I hope to bring to market because it's just so unique and delicious. So I'll throw in there some collagen protein powder, Mm -hmm. which is um, really rich in in the ability to help rebuild my joint tissues Mm -hmm. and support my skin. Um, And then I also like to layer in there some wonderful lipotrophic factors that help me break down my fat. So that means adding in some lecithin from sunflower seeds so it's not genetically modified. Mm -hmm. So I have choline in there and inositol in there, those wonderful things that really help me stay in a positive mood, which I love. It also helps to emulsify the shake so it tastes Mm -hmm. better. And then I'll layer in some really high quality Hawaiian spirulina. And that brings about just wonderful B vitamins in the dark pigments that we need because when we travel it's so hard to get to a good salad especially if sure. you're traveling to the third world or you're traveling to an area with dodgy water that's why i kind of avoid because i nearly died of food poisoning i really mm. avoid any risky food and kind of carry with me my own green powder and i love um spirulina that comes from hawaii because i'm worried about spirulina that comes from china yeah. so i really like that good quality spirulina and then i also really like to add in there some good quality herbs that are adaptogens that help me adapt to the level of stress that I'm going through because just flying through the air, let's face it, we're 35,000 feet in the air traveling at 700 miles an hour. It's a pretty unnatural thing. We didn't do it until the last 100 years. No. So I really help my body adapt to the level of stress by giving it something like maca powder, which is a wonderful adaptogen plant that comes from Peru. And I just love how it tastes. It's like a caramelized kind of um, root that tastes so good and I put that in there and then I'll add some cinnamon and some turmeric and some ginger as anti-inflammatory favorites Um, and I find that the inositol I add sometimes some extra inositol and that works as a sweetener but if I have to I might also add in some ketone powder that sweetens with stevia yeah so ketones are pre-converted ketones Yeah. A question that sounds quite complicated. Do you travel sure. with all that stuff in your baggage or do you pre-mix no. it? I pre-mix it into a mason jar um, or I actually will put it into a dark black container so it doesn't oxidize and I'll carry it with me. And that way I only have like one little jar that's made up for the amount of time that I need. And I'll count out my scoops so that I can I can go with it as is. But not that you have to travel with all of that, but just to know that you can even buy prepared protein shakes that are free of allergies. The big thing is a lot of people rely on whey protein powder, which can bloat you and cause constipation. So I want you to really consider what protein really works best with you. Is it hemp heart protein? Is it collagen protein? Is it, um, you know, some people do okay with a green pea protein powder. Mm-hmm. But that's what I want to make sure of is that I get enough protein. And then I always travel with my omega-3 fats in a capsule. And then I think the third thing that I think is critical for my health is that I travel with a, with a probiotic that's, yeah. that's shelf-stable. And that allows my bowel floor to adjust to new water and adjust to a new environment and keep me regular. So a lot of people will find that they get constipation when they're in the air because right. they get so dehydrated. So well, make sure that's to so keep true. that bowel yeah. floor up. Yeah. And many people get, as you say, travel diarrhea and there's nothing but saccharomyces boulardii to stop that uh, naturally. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, it yeah. was really wonderful talking to you about that. I, uh, maybe we should schedule a second talk because I really would like to continue our talk. It's so fascinating. <laughs> and Thank and you ask so you a little bit more about your good ideas that you have. And it's really a good tip for travelers, all your supplements that you have usually in your uh, milkshake. Just put it in a mason jar, take it with you. Cool. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And nice and easy. What I always say, you have to prepare. And if you don't, you end up like myself last week and eat junk, which I didn't want. Mm-hmm. I did, and I put it on my website. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a bad right? example, it was a stupid decision, mm-hmm. but hey, you learn from that. Yeah, you do. For now, sure. Julie, it's I want I, I want to thank you so much for being on today's show. Now, your website is, I believe, JulieDaniLook.com. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. JulieDaniLook.com is my main website, and I'm also at JulieDaniLook on both Facebook, um, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And my favorite social media is definitely uh, Instagram because that's where. I actually can answer more questions and have fun sharing what I eat every day. So I take pictures of what I eat and share it on my Insta stories. Excellent. I thank you so much. And this brings me to the end of today's show. And please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions, thoughts, comments or suggestions. Or if you'd like to connect Julie and need her uh, contact information, my email here is christine at communityradio.ca. And I'm always grateful for any feedback. I also want to extend a special thank you to today's producer, Ron Goyash. And thank you all for listening to Healthy Alternatives. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer. Tune in next Thursday at noon Atlantic Standard Time on 97.5 CIOE FM Community Radio for the next episode. Goodbye and have a great day.